Throughout this tutorial series, we will be using a generic singleton pattern for all our managers. And we will be creating some different managers. We already created one called a level manager, but we'll also be creating a menu manager, a game manager, and some other stuff. So we will implement a singleton pattern in each and every one of them, and this pattern will be generic. So to make a generic singleton pattern, we will need to understand what generics are. So I am going to use this video to explain you a little about um, how to use generics and what they actually uh, actually are in C Sharp. So the code I'm going to write right now is not uh, connected to the actual tutorial. It's uh, just for demonstration purposes and to show you what uh, generics are. So if you already know what generics are, you can actually skip this video. Um, but if you have no clue about generics, then I think it's a good idea for you to stick around and watch this video out so you can see what they are and how to use them. And then in the next video, we are going to create the singleton pattern. So this is basically just a little uh, teaching video of, um, of generics. So I can pick any script here um, to show you what generics are. And I'm just going to open up my level manager here. And here I'm going to make a new function. Let's say that we uh, have some kind of application or game where we need to swap around some different uh, values. So let's say that we make a public void, uh, let's call it swap in integer. This swap integer takes in two parameters called first, it is called A and B. So it takes in A and B. And um, we need to swap these around. So we make an integer called temporary is equal to a and integer, um, let's say, then a is equal to b and b is equal to temporary. So this code here is not very um, complex or anything. It just simply swaps uh, a and b. So if a is 1 and b is 2, then a will be 2 and b will be 1 when we are done with this because we put a into temporary. We said a in equal to b and then we say b equal to temporary so we just swap them around um let's see if we can go up here and a equals a one and b equals two so now we have created the two variables up here and we are just going to use them as a reference and when we put the ref keyword in front here then when we call swap then it's going to create a reference to these so everything we do in here is going to happen to these variables up here because I say swap int and ref a and ref b and because I use the ref keyword as I said then this one will not be copied but it will create a reference to this one so this one is actually if I changed anything on a here I will also change something on a here I can make a debug that lock the states um, a debug dot lock b and then we can write b and we can write a and let's make a little plus here so we can write them out and then write debug dot lock before swap there we go and then we can copy and paste this code and paste it again down here after swap. So this code is just for showing that we can write something in the console, right? So we have the code here before swap a is 1, b is 2, after swap a is 2, b is 1. That's all very nice and we can actually swap two variables around. Yay! How great! But what if I need this functionality to work with more um, data types? Well, if I would need to do the exact same thing for strings, then I would need to create one more function here. So I would need to call one called swap string and then make this one into a string and this into a string and this into a string. So now I have two functions, one for swapping integers, one for swapping, swapping strings. And up here I could go do swap string and I could make these up here strings string a b string b string and this one could be one 
and this one down here could be two. And then we just reference a string and b string down here. There we go. Um, and then we need to write them down here as well. Okay. So let's see, we have this down here for swapping the strings around. So if I save this and jump in and play again, let's try to clear the console. There we go. So let's see here. Before swap, a is one, b is two. After swap, a is two, b is one. So now we can also swap strings around. So yeah, what's the point of all this? Well, as you can see, when if I need to use different data types, I need to keep making new functions here. And that's not ideal at all. Let's say that I also need to swap doubles, then I need to create a new function for doubles and so on. And that's not very great that I need to keep making new fun functions. So this is where generics comes into the picture. We can create a generic function and generics are actually a way of defining the data type at compile time instead of defining it already. Um, so for example, if we make a list, then it, this is called generics because the list, when I instantiate the list, I tell it that this list should contain integers. And I can do the exact same thing. This is the, the generic thing, right? As you can see, when I make these pointy brackets, there is a T in there, which stands for type, and it actually says that this is generic. So I can actually tell it to handle any kind of data type. And I can do the same for my functions. So instead of having all these kind of different swap functions for swapping around some values, well, then I can delete all that down there. Oh, let's just keep it now. And I can go down here and say, well, swap string, I can delete that. And I can delete my, I can change my swap into just name swap. And then I can say T and T instead of, um, instead of the value, um, the data type, then I can write T here. And then I can write T here. So what is this? Well, now I define that this function is generic by defining a T after, um, the name of the function and then this, these pointy brackets and then I also replace all the other data types with t so now when I call swap I can go up here I can actually delete all this and I can write swap and then I define what kind of data this one should work on I want to use the string strings then I write string and then I say a string comma b string okay if I run a I need the ref keyword in front of it. If I want to use the, um, what is called the integer, I can say swap int and ref a comma ref b. So now I have the same function, one function down here. And basically it's, it replaced the two other functions. So now I only need one function because I am using generics. And as you can see here, it's basically a search and replace when I call swap with string, then all the T's down here are actually replaced by the string keyword. So what you put inside the bracket here is going to replace everywhere it, stands, it says T. If I call this one down here with integer, well, then it is going to replace all the T's with integer. So in, in general, it actually states like this right down here, like so. This is what it does when you compile the code. But right now it's T. So it replaces everything. And as you can see, if I let's just uncomment the string one here, or we can actually just say um, debug.log a, let's just do a here, a and then a after. And if I save this, play the game again, clear this, then you'll see that a is one first and then it turns into two. So now you can see that we have a swap function that can actually swap um, swap any data type around. So this is generics. So now you should have kind of an idea about what generics are. I know you, you, you haven't been taught everything about generics. There's a lot more to it, but in general, you can look at 
generics as the T that stands for type and it can be replaced by any data type when you instantiate something. Okay, So this is going to be used in our singleton and you'll see how that works in the next video. So thank you very much for watching this video and remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Also remember that Interscope Studios is a community founder page so all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can support me on the Patreon page where you can get all the projects that I've ever created. Or you can also support me on um, on my own page by getting one of my projects as a standalone product. So thank you very much for watching.